Welcome to the Daily Reminder Network. Heart Softeners by Sheikh Mu'iz Bukhari. Many respected elders, brothers and sisters and the viewers of the Daily Reminder Network. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأصلي وأسلم على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا وحبيبنا وقرة أعيننا محمد بن عبد الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه أفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم أما بعد. We always begin by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is our creator, sustainer, nourisher, protector, and curer. We ask Allah the Almighty to shower his choicest of blessings and salutations upon our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his family members, his companions, and all those who tread upon his path with utmost sincerity until the day of Qiyamah. Insha'Allah ta'ala, for tonight's heart softener, we will be touching on an-niyyah otherwise translated as the intention. Allahu Akbar. Our deen, Islam is based on intentions. Actions are but by intentions. And I would like to begin by stating that many a great deed, many a great deed is diminished, is diminished because of a small intention. And many a small deed, many a small and trivial deed is magnified and amplified because of a great and noble intention. Allahu Akbar. Look at the words of our beloved master, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who states, along the lines of these words, إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ بِالنِّيَّاتِ إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ بِالنِّيَّاتِ وَإِنَّمَا لِكُلِّ مْرِئِمْ مَا نَوَى That actions are but by intentions. وَإِنَّمَا لِكُلِّ مْرِئِمْ مَا نَوَى And that every person, every man will get, what, will get according to what he intends. Allahu Akbar. And the narration goes along the lines of these words that the person whose migration, whose hijrah is for Allah and his messenger, his migration, his hijrah will be for Allah and his messenger. But for the one whose migration was to perhaps attain a worldly benefit, or to marry a woman perhaps, then his hijrah will be for that particular worldly benefit, or to marry that particular woman, and it will not be for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, nor will it be for the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Scholars, rahimahumullah, they state that niya, the intention, can be of three types. Primarily, number one, lillah. That is, it is solely and purely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the other two categories are blameworthy categories. Secondly being that we do something, an ibadah perhaps, for Allah. And also we have another part of our ourselves saying that it is for it is for the khalq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Say for example, we go to the masjid because our father or our mother wants us to be in the masjid. Perhaps, you know, one of us, our parents are forcing us to go to the masjid. We go to the masjid, we want to pray for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but we also want to show perhaps so, so and so that, you know, I have come to the masjid. So this is... Uh, this intention is not purely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is contaminated, Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala purify our intentions. The final category is that it is completely void of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's pleasure, but rather it is only done for the khalq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is just done for name and fame, for show and publicity. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us all. It is completely void of ikhlas, completely void of the sincerity for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the first category, that is the category that all of us, we need to strive for because that is a pure intention that will be rewarded inevitably by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And intentions are amazing things, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam. Let me, let me implore to all of you right now, everyone in the gathering and also the, the ones who are watching the video, my brothers and sisters, right now, right now, just intend, just bring about in your hearts that, Ya Allah, if, and, and also before I go into that, the place of intention, the place of intention or the place of intending is one's heart is one's heart. So the question may arise, so what about articulating or pronouncing our intentions? Well, I don't want to delve into the, into the difference of opinions amidst the scholars, but know for a fact that there are some scholars, rahimahumullah, who state, 
who go to the extent of stating that articulating your intention is considered a bid'ah, an innovation, because it has not been reported from our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or the Sahaba ridwanullahi ta'ala alayhi majma'een that they used to articulate their intention. Rather, it is something that it should be in an individual's heart. We should intend using our hearts. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for all of us. So let us all now intend in our hearts, Ya Allah, if I have a million dollars with me right now, if I have a million dollars with me right now, I would dish it out in charity. I would build masajid. I would feed the hungry. I would feed the poor. I would build libraries. I would build hospitals. I would do so much of charitable projects. Just intend it right now and you will be amazed on the day of Qiyamah. On the day of Qiyamah, when our book of records will be handed onto our right, right hands, inshaAllah ta'ala, we'll open our books and we will be amazed because we will see a million dollar transaction has been recorded. Allahu Akbar. Our accounts have been credited a million dollars. I'm sure most of us would not have even seen a million dollars in our lives. Allahu Akbar. And we would be amazed on the day of Qiyamah. Ya Allah, what is this million dollar transaction? And it will be said to us, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, it was because of your noble intention. It was because of that intention you placed that if... You had a million dollars, you would give it out, dish it out in charity. You are rewarded for that intention. So let us right now, let us all intend great and noble intentions. We will be rewarded for those intentions, insha'Allah ta'ala. An amazing hadith which has been recorded in Tirmidhi. Abu Kabsha al-Anmari radiallahu anhu, he states that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is reported to have said, Along the lines of these words, that there are four categories of people in this dunya. There are four categories of people. Number one is a person whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed him with knowledge and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed him with wealth. He uses that wealth for all kinds of good purposes. Allahu Akbar. He dishes out charity. He does many charitable projects. He helps people. He uses his wealth in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doing good, doing, uh, giving out uh, charity, sadaqah and all kinds of good deeds. Allahu Akbar. He is the best. He is the best of the four individuals. Now the second individual, the second individual is the one whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him knowledge but not wealth. Allah the Almighty has blessed him with knowledge but not wealth. He thinks in his heart, Ya Allah, if I had wealth, if I had a lot of wealth, I would do projects of this nature, good deeds, sadaqah, I would help all kinds of people, I would help everybody I can, and I will do so many good deeds with it. Allahu Akbar, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is reported to have said that this individual, the second individual, his reward will be the same as the first individual because of his noble intentions, Allahu Akbar. The third individual, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, is an individual Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed him with only wealth and not knowledge. Only wealth and not knowledge. He uses that wealth in vice, in transgression, in transgressing the limits of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He uses that wealth for all kinds of sins, in, in sinful acts. In different and various sins, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive all of us. He is the worst of the lot, Allahu Akbar. And the fourth individual is my dear brothers and sisters in Islam. An individual whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not blessed him with knowledge, nor has Allah blessed him with wealth. But he looks at this evil person who has wealth, who is committing various sins, and he thinks, you know what, he envies that individual. If I had wealth like that individual, I would commit sins, I would do this, I would party, I would splurge on women and all kinds of haram. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us all. The scary reality is that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is reported to have said in that hadith that this individual will get the same sin of that individual who had the wealth with him and spent it on sin. The fourth individual who does not have the wealth, but yet he intends to do bad with it, he will get the same sin. This is the power of intentions, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam. So let us not waste those noble intentions. Let us intend that which is good. Let us intend that which is good, resulting in us gaining great rewards and gaining success in this world as well as the hereafter. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us and may he purify our hearts so that we intend only that which is good. Allahu Akbar. Now let me share with you all a story. 
a story that has been recorded in the books of history. There was once a pious worshipper, a pious worshipper who used to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He used to involve himself in various acts of worship. He used to involve himself in various acts of worship. One day, he finds out that close to his house, there is a village and people of that village had started worshipping a particular tree. Instead of worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they had started worshipping a particular tree. This enrages him. He, this fills him with rage and anger. He rushes to a particular axe. He grabs the axe and he rushes he rushes towards the direction of the tree because he wants to cut down that tree and call people towards worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instead of worshipping a tree that cannot benefit them nor harm them. Allahu Akbar. Now he's on his way to cut the tree. Shaitan, the devil, the accursed devil, he comes in the form of a human being and tries to stop this man from going and cutting the tree. Allahu Akbar. He tells him, Oh man, Ya Rajul, why do you want to go cut the tree? How on earth is it going to benefit you? That man says, No, I'm doing it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is what is important. I have to make amr bil ma'roof wa nahi anil munkar. I have to enjoin good and I have to forbid evil. So I'm going to cut the tree and call the people towards Allah subhanahu Shaitan looks at him, the devil looks at him and he sees this strength in him and he decides I have to wrestle him to stop him and both of them involve themselves in a fight. He tries to wrestle him and stop him but the man, the worshipper, he outpowers Shaitan, he knocks him down and wrestles him to the ground. Now Shaitan realizes that he is defeated, he says, Ya Rajul, let me tell you something. If you give up this mission of yours and go back home every single day, when you wake up, look under your pillar, pillow and I will give you a hundred dinar. There will be a hundred dinar every single day under your pillow. Now the man, he thinks, you know what? If I have a hundred dinar every single day, I could do so many good deeds. I could give out so much of sadaqah. I could do charitable acts. This is a good deal. And he agrees to that particular deal and he goes, he goes home. Day one, he gets up and he finds a hundred dinar. Day two, day three, day four, and so many day, days go by. Every single day when he gets up, he sees a hundred dinar under his pillow. So all the while he's thinking, you know, I've struck a fantastic deal. I don't have to worry about money. Every single day I have a hundred dinar under my pillow. Then one day when he woke up, there was no money. There was no money under the pillow. Now this once again filled him up with rage and anger. He rushes to the axe. He takes the axe. I'm going to cut down that tree. And he starts walking towards the direction of the tree to cut the tree. On the way, on the way, Shaitan once again comes in the guise of a human being, tries to deter him away and ends up wrestling him. But this time, Shaitan overpowers him and pins him down to the ground. Allahu Akbar. And this time, the man is surprised. He states, what has weakened me? Last time I was the one, I was the victor. I overpowered you, but this time how on earth did you overpower me? Then Shaitan says, <clears throat> I am the accursed devil. The last time, the last time you were going with a pure and noble intention. You were going solely for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that is why you were so strong and I could not beat you. But this time you were going for the money. You were not going for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your intentions were contaminated. And that is why I overpowered you and I pinned you down to the ground. So my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, it is important that we purify our intentions. Our intentions should be solely for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So may Allah the Almighty forgive all of our sins. May He accept our good deeds. And may He the Almighty unite all of us in the gardens of Jannah with our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa akhir da'wai an alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen jazakumullahu khair Donate now go to www.thedailyreminder.org slash donate and stay updated by joining our network's social links